Hello, welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be talking about the RMP. My name is Wyatt and I'm employed in the Royal Military Police. So my job in a nutshell is essentially a police officer. <laughs> They do get a lot of stick and there is a lot of jokes out there about them but it is another good uh, job role out there. A lot of you have inquired about it and asked me to get some information for it for you. So I've gone and spoken to a good mate of mine who has been in the RMP for quite some time. He's a sergeant over there and he's given me some good information that I'm now going to pass on to you to help you choosing your trade, your application and further on in phase one and phase two. So first of all, what is the Royal Military Police, the RMP? The RMP are there to uphold and enforce the law for the, for the British Army, whether that's in the UK or abroad, um, supporting the serving personnel on operations. Uh, broadly speaking, what they do is a lot of the time is they will obviously uphold the law within the UK, but then they also support the territorial police forces in garrison towns, especially on like weekends and night out, nights out, where there's a big uh, serving personnel presence and then they can gather intelligence um, and hold detainees. So they're very qualified and you will see that in the rest of the video. So when it comes to choosing your trade and you wanting to join the RMP, there's a couple of things you need to take into consideration. The first one being is that when you pass out of phase two, you will have to be 18. So you'll have to plan it around your age. If you're still only 16, then this may not work. You may just have to wait a few more months until you are 18 when you leave phase two. Secondly, you do need to score a higher score on a bar test. I don't know exactly. If you are scoring a lower score, uh, then you may not get the job role, but please speak to your career managers about this and they will be able to advise you some more. But it is a higher score that you need to get within the RMP. And lastly, you will need to be able to pass a security clearance and a Provo vetting. This is going back through uh, with the police force, just going back through your history, see if you've got any criminal record, any criminal involvement, any convictions or arrests. Um, in your past. Phase one for the RMP is exactly the same for pretty much all trades except for infantry. You will go through Perbright or Winchester uh, to complete your phase one training where you will then move on to your phase two training after that which is 22 weeks long. Uh, the first eight, three weeks is pretty strict. You won't be allowed to leave camp even on weekends. So for the first three weeks you are there getting inspected every day. Uh, this is because the RMP believe that your, your standards need to be expanded on. You you need to obviously be able to hold the minimal standards that you have left phase one at, but you also need to expand on them. So you can't be holding the army accountable for things if you can't even have your own discipline and your own standards um, at a high level. Also through this then, you'll start learning the law and legislation for the first eight weeks. And then at the end of those eight weeks, you will have two exams that are pass or fail. If you do fail, you get two attempts. If you fail again, you then do get back coursed. After these eight weeks then, you get to move on to interviewing and statement taking with the SIB. Okay, that's the RMP's version of detectives. Once this is completed and you've passed those two exams, completed the statement taking and interviewing techniques, you then move into different sections where you go into a four week round robin. This is arrest and search, personal safety training with batons and handcuffs. You then play coppers and red caps, so that's their computer systems, and then you've got and then you've got crime scene investigation. So I don't get this bit wrong, I'm gonna read from my phone. So after you've done the round robin, you then move into a four-week policing exercise called environmental training, your ETs. This is where you will actually set up a mock police station. And throughout those four weeks, you will deal with different scenarios um, and then each individual will get their own case. You have to start it from scratch, work through the case files and build it up and take it all the way to prosecution. Um, so it's prepared for prosecution. And then throughout that, you will also respond to traffic accidents, suspicious people and pub fights. So it's basically a, uh, a four week exercise um, as if the infantry were going out into a harbour. This you're going into a police station and then you're going to just go through the scenarios just to make sure you are up to standard, uh, which sounds pretty decent to be honest, something realistic instead of just sitting in a classroom all day. After you ET, then you then actually go into the field. You will learn the role of an RMP, so on operations and in exercise. You will then get split into fire teams as well, where you become a 2IC and you learn that role taking um, section attack lanes as a 2IC. You've got basic signals and then you go into a final exercise as well um, where you even go up to platoon attacks which is pretty decent as well so it's not all just 
uh, stuck in an office or anything like that, you do get to go and exercise, which is pretty cool. After this then, you then get to promote to Lance Corporal because all RMP uh, pick up and have to be a minimum of Lance Corporal when they leave phase two. So throughout phase two, it is tri-service. You all have RAF and Royal Navy Police with you and any voluntary transfers. Apparently the PT is pretty challenging, which is cool. It's progressive, but challenging. Um, it's not up, really up there really high, but it is quite challenging, which is good. Once you pass out, uh, you, get, you get to get your driving license, which is cool. You'll go and do your B license if you need it. And then you even work up to C and C plus E, which is pretty cool. You get that straight out of phase two and not everyone gets to get that. A lot of people have to wait for their C and C plus E. So that's a real bonus. So your standards and disciplined uh, integrity do need to be 100% throughout. Any sort of untrustworthiness or integrity issues, then they will just withdraw you from training and you will have to um, leave the RMP. So... Their motto is lead by example. Uh, so yeah, you need to lead by example being the RMP. So make sure your integrity is 100%. So it should be throughout the army. Not that everyone's is, but it should be. So I'm gonna read off the list of further opportunities within the RMP so I don't get it wrong. So you get, you get to understand that you don't just have to become a Royal Military Police. You can go on to further courses um, and expand your knowledge and experiences and skills. So you get to, they do have their own close protection team, um, so you can go on to do close protection. I've heard it's pretty hard to get onto, but it is an opp opportunity out there. Uh, you've got Para Provo, so that's the ones that work out in Colchester, used to work with them, so you can go and do P Company, get your wings. You've also got your Royal Marines Police Troops, you can go and do your commando course and work with the commando brigades, which is, which is another exciting um, thing that you can do. Uh, you've got SIB, like I said, was their detectives, and then you've got SCSI, so your crime scene investigations, and then you've got your co covert policing, um, which I can't expand on. So there is some pretty cool opportunities out there. You don't just have to be bog standard RMP driving around in a car, dealing with just standard issues. You can then go and um, experience new and exciting things. So it's definitely things to check out. Uh, throughout your time in the RMP, apparently there is a lot of opportunity for postings away, uh, getting on op tours or S triple T. So you, which is understandable, pretty much wherever the army goes, you're gonna need RMP there enforcing the law and discipline. So wherever the army go, there's always going to be RMP. Apparently CP though, if you do get to go into close protection, there is a lot of opt tours for that. So that's something to look at. So that's my video on the RMP. Hope you found it useful. That is all from uh, a good friend of mine within the RMP. Like I said, he is a sergeant. This is widely known uh, knowledge. You can find it on the internet. But if you do have any further questions, please let us know. Look forward to next video then, um, where obviously I'll be carrying on my series for the marathon prep. And then I'll be going into the British Army and the Royal Artillery, and I'll be working my way through the different trades so I can give you as much information and help you choose your trade. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you soon.